Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord for your presence this evening as we start our journey of revival continued. What a blessed Sabbath we had yesterday. Can you say amen? And it's a pleasure and a privilege to be back in God's house one more time. You know, because of COVID, we stopped meeting at night. And it's a true privilege to come back this evening and to begin our journey. And we're happy that this is the 60th anniversary of the Emmanuel Brinklow Church, but it is also a revival. And I praise tonight because we need to be revived. Can anybody testify with me, Lord? Yes. Please don't pass me by. We need revival. I want you to look at the screen for a moment and read this quote with me from Review and Herald 1887. Read it with me, everybody. A revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent to seek this. But there is a tension. You know what the tension is? The tension is found in John 17 where Christ prayed that we be one as his Father in heaven and he were one. The hindrance of revival is that we're divided. The hindrance of revival is that we're still polarized. So would you pray that during this week, we be one, and that the world will know we are his by the way we love one another. Can you say amen as we continue in our journey of this revival? May this be our greatest need and our greatest desire, that we be revived by his spirit. Would you pray with me before our praise team opens and sings? Lord, thank you tonight that you brought us through and you have blessed us to make it one more time in your house. We do pray for revival. We do pray that we are one in you as we are one with each other. And so bless this journey of our own spiritual walk at the Emmanuel Brinklow Church, in Jesus' name, let everybody say, amen. Amen. Call to revival. Somebody say, praise the Lord. It's time for God to revive our souls. Now we want to just sing and worship him and call all that he means to us. How many of you know him to be your healer? That, that's my number one right now in my phase of healing. How many of you know him to be a deliverer, a savior? His name is Jesus. We just want to call on that name. And the song simply says, you know it. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. Come on, say, I call you holy. Your name is holy. Let's say, I call you holy. I call you. Your name is holy. You are so holy. Oh, I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are. And holy you are. Yeah. Yeah. Your name is faithful, faithful you are. 
I want to introduce you to a song that you will hear. We are calling out for revival. And the way to call out is to ask to be as close to God like we've never had before. How many of you are thirsty and hungry for God's righteousness? Oh yes, that's our prayer for tonight. Now I'm going to teach you this first part. And we want you to just join in. The song says, I hear the sound of revival that's deep in the hearts of our people. Lord, we want you to send it now. Send it now. How many of you long for the revival? Now let this song just meditate in your heart as we learn it together. It goes like this. I hear the sound of revival deep in the hearts of your people. Send it now. We want, we want it now. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Yes, of revival. Deep down, deep in the hearts of your people. Send it now. nicely theme song as we wait for the sound of revival. Thank 
Good evening, all. Our scripture this evening is found in Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. I will read in your hearing. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do all according to the, all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thine mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make the way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Shall we stand together as we pray? Our gracious Father, what a privilege we have to come into thy presence tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the service. We thank you for the call for revival. We know that soon you are coming, and only as we are in right relationship with you will we be found ready. We plead that each one of us that is under the pure sound of my voice at this moment would so regulate their hearts in according to your will and remember your words that we have heard. Create within us a clean heart, O God, Renew a right spirit, we plead. We thank you for our presenter tonight. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be with Dr. Medley. Open our hearts, open our understanding, that we might be willing and willing to do, to hear, and to obey that which will be shared to us tonight. For then only as we listen, only as we obey, will revival be a true experience for us. Create within us a clean heart, we have, we, we have already asked, and we thank you for hearing, and we thank you, Lord, for answering. In the name of Jesus, amen. Good evening. How many of you have come into the house of the Lord because you are wanting an encounter with Jesus Christ? Oh, that's all of the hands. That should be all the hands in here. That is good because I don't know about you, but I came to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I came into his courts with praise, and so I am going to bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. 60 years is a long time, and I believe that the Lord is good, and so I am so happy to be in the house of the Lord. I want to welcome you to the Emmanuel Brinklow Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so happy to have those of you here who are worshiping with us in person, but we're also so grateful to have many of you who are worshiping with us online right now, and tonight we are going to have an experience with Jesus Christ, uh, the, uh, my spiritual father, our most recent pastor president, the one and only Dr. Anthony Medley is in the house. Amen. He's present and accounted for. A word will be shared, but also we have an amazing psalmist with us this evening in the one and only Josh Copeland, recording gospel artist. So we are going to meet Jesus tonight is what I'm saying. And so I need you to loose yourself, get a little free in your seat. All right, so that you can really fully experience what God has for you. Just a couple of announcements. We're asking that everyone who comes to worship with us in person, please only sit in 
in the two middle aisles. Please only sit in the two middle aisles. And we also want to make sure that you're joining us in person every evening. Tomorrow night, we will be blessed uh, with Gary Wimbish, the Vice President for Administration for the Allegheny East Conference. He will be blessing us with Psalmist Duan Starling. And so this is going to be a powerful week that you do not want to miss, all right? So at this time, we want to turn your attention to the screens. We are going to every night have a powerful historical video that's going to show us a little bit about Brinklow then and now. Be blessed. At Emmanuel Brinklow Seventh-day Adventist Church, music has echoed through our halls for 60 years, bringing joy, upliftment, and divine connection to our congregation. From our earliest days, Groups like Assurance set a high standard, their voices laying the groundwork for a thriving musical ministry. Through the decades, the Sanctuary Choir and Gospel Choir have filled our sanctuary with powerful anthems of faith. Each choir has its unique sound, yet all resonate with the spirit of our community. Our commitment to musical education shines through our vibrant children's programs. Here, young voices learn to sing praises and carry forward our musical legacy. Sometimes it's the rare unseen performances that truly highlight the breadth of Brinkle's musical journey. These moments, both big and small, remind us of the profound impact of our music ministry. As we celebrate 60 years, we look forward to continuing this beautiful tradition of song and praise. At Emmanuel Brinkle Seventh-day Adventist Church, together, let's keep the music alive for generations to come. It is now time for each one of us to participate in the service. Would our deacons come forward to take the offering? What a privilege we have to share and to give as the Lord has given us. Yes, they are there. They are coming forward. It will not be long. Remember for our revival, one of the responsibilities that each one of us has is to assist in the needs of our congregation. What a blessing, what a blessing. The Lord is truly blessing me. I think we can sing that right along with you. Come on, everybody, let's sing together. The Lord, the Lord is blessing me right now, right now. Oh, right now, I said, I said, the Lord is blessing me, He's blessing me. Oh, right now.
participation. Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you for those who have been able to give tonight. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for giving us finances that we can assist in the church's function. Bless the offering to your name's honor and glory. And may it lift up your will in all that is said and done here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. It is um, a prayer time here at Brinklow. And tonight, I want us to all participate in our prayer time. So if you would, will you take your cell phone out and just wave it at me real quick? Everybody take your cell phone out. Everybody, amen. If you, hey, oh man, y'all looking good. All right, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet very quickly, all of us with our cell phones. And I want you to go stand beside somebody you don't normally talk to. Will you do that for me real quick? Let's do that. Let's move real quick. We don't have a whole lot of time. So go stand beside somebody you don't normally talk to. Y'all are good friends, you know, you're acquaintances, but you don't normally stand with them, sit with them. Let's move real quick. Let's move real quick. Make sure you have your cell phone in your hand. Song says, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We're going to sing a little bit of that. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that cell phone. I want you to turn your camera on. And I want you to do a selfie with that person. Will you do that real quick? Real quick, both of you. Do a selfie real quick. It's Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, yeah. All right, can you do that? Take a selfie with them real quick. Take a selfie with them. Make sure both of you get a chance to take a selfie. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. For the next seven days for this revival, that's the person you're going to be praying for. Come on, say amen. You can put a face with it now. And uh, I'm just a little challenged because nobody took a selfie with me. So can I ask DJ, will you take a selfie with me so I can have somebody to pray for this week? Love it, love it, love it. Love it, love it. All right, let's return to our seats. We're going to be praying for this person all week long. All week long. Can, can we just sing a little bit of that song that says, Jesus, Jesus? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's it. Jesus, Jesus. Come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, raise your voice and say, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. That's it. Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. One more. Say, let's heal her. Heal her, heal her, heal her. Come on now. Heal her. Sounding good. Heal her, heal her, heal her. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, tonight we, by faith, we, we took some photos with some people. Because we want to believe you on their behalf all week long. And for the next seven days, we believe that you're going to do something extraordinary in their lives. And so we're just excited tonight. We're, 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 we're so happy tonight that we get a chance to call on your name on their behalf. And we're going to believe that you're going to be Jesus in their life. We're, we're going to believe you're going to be Savior in their life. We, we're going to believe you're going to be healer and deliverer and financial breakthrough. We believe you're going to do something during this prayer time every night. So we're going to call on your name on their behalf. We're going to pull up their picture and, and we're going to start speaking blessings over their life. We're, we're going to ask you to do something so extraordinary that before the end of the week, we're going to have testimonies about this is what happened.
happened in my life. Somebody prayed for me and had me on their mind. They, they took a little time to pray for me. We believe you're going to do that during this revival because there's nothing too hard for you. We don't have to know all of their business. We just want you to do it. That's, that's what we want you to do. Just do it for them. Whatever it is they need done in their lives. God, we believe you're going to do it this week. You don't need 30 days. You can turn it around even now. So will you do it for us? We, we acted in faith. We didn't know who we were going to stand beside, but you knew tonight who we were going to take that selfie with. And they need our prayers. Help us to not fail by not praying for them. And then tonight, you sent the man of God here. He did not come just to make us feel good. We need to be placed under conviction by your word. And so, Father, challenge us by the word of the living God so that when we leave this place, we don't want to leave here comfortable. We want to be uncomfortable because we know we must obey what your word has said. You've used Dr. Medley in times before, but we don't want what you've done in times before. We want something different tonight. And so we wait with bated breath and with expectancy. And as the psalmist comes, God, we know he can sing. We just want to sense your anointing in the room. That's what we want. We've come to be revived. And we expect that revival will happen in our hearts first tonight. And then, Father, before the week is out, will you place us under enough conviction that we would tell somebody else, you need to be at revival. You need to be at the Brinklow experience as we experience Jesus Christ. That's our prayer then and now in Jesus' name. I believe somebody can say amen right about now. Giving God all the glory he deserves tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm fooled up, as they say. I know that doesn't sound right, but I'm fooled up. And I'm praising God even right now. I do want to recognize our vice president for administration and our speaker on tomorrow evening. Uh, Elder Gary Wimbish, who's here. God bless you, my friend. Welcome back home. Good to see you today. Come on, put your hands together. We're praying for you, even right now. And again, I'm going to try this again. I'm so happy to see my friend, Brother John Sackett, who is here from Adventist Health Care, the COO. We're so happy to have him with us. And may God continue to bless you. Uh, this evening, we have the immediate past pastor. <laughs> we have, a, we have a, a little joke that's going on here. There was a prophetic word that was echoed out in the airways this evening. <laughs> So we get ready to undergo the test of a prophetess to <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Praise God. But this evening, I want to find my, my notes before I go off script, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Just sing it, all right. <laughs> oh, my Lord, I had it here just a moment ago. And there the Lord is doing it, especially after the prophecy, yes. There we are. 
our speaker this evening has a unique designation as the director of health ministries for the Allegheny East Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. With 40 years of experience in ministry, he now has the privilege to continue his experience with health ministries and add to this job description. He enjoys collaborating with health professionals to deliver a contextual SDA health message. I like reading this because I sound like him when I do that. To people of color, he is also passionate about the proclamation of the three angels message and health liberation as the greatest need in the world. In his current role, he provides holistic strategies for wellness to pastors, educators, families, communities, churches, and hospitals where he serves. In particular, as a board member at Adventist Healthcare, White Oak Medical Center, Silver Spring, Maryland. He has rich and a rich and extensive background in ministry, which also includes years of service as a youth pastor, associate pastor, conference youth director, college chaplain, vice president of student services, adjunct faculty, police chaplain, hospital chaplain, and senior pastor. He's a graduate of Pine Forge Academy, Pine Forge, Pennsylvania, and Oakwood University, formerly Oakwood College, where he earned his Bachelor's of Arts degree in theology. He also attended the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University, Berry Springs, Michigan, Michigan, where he earned the Master's of Divinity and then later his doctorate degree in ministry. He is also a certified martial arts instructor. And many of us call him affectionately sensei. As a result of his dissertation research, he was bold enough to try this. He developed and taught a specialized curriculum entitled Developing Youth Through Spiritual and Physical Disciplines for High School Students, which transforms practitioners from the martial way to the Christian way of living. He has more than 25 years as an instructor. He believes that fighting skills are most effective when anchored in self-disciplines and self-development. He continues to teach this holistic approach of self-protection and self-development in private practice and for religious groups and organizations. He enjoys many types of sports. The one he avoids is golf. That is not on the script, but I know that from experience. <laughs> He's an avid reader. He's an ardent fish aquarium hobbyist. And he is married to his high school sweetheart, former first lady, the immediate past, former first lady, first lady of the Emmanuel Brinkley Seventh-day Adventist Church, Dr. India Pinkney Medley, PhD. She is the CNO, am I correct, at Howard University hospital slash Adventist healthcare. Did I get it, John? Did I get it? All right. They are, are to their union, they have been blessed with two children, um, Anthony II and um, oh, Milan. I always get caught with that M-Y. Milan, Dr. Medley's biblical worldview is shaped by Romans 12, 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
He did not mention it, but he was the pastor of this August church for 14 years. And he may be the longest serving pastor of this church, and it's a marvelous record. We love you, my friend. To the both of you, welcome home. They are still members of this church. They are still members of this church. And when I don't see them after a while, I set up pastoral visits to go and find out what's going on with them, make sure they're okay. But after we will have been blessed by ministry and song and music and that Dr. Josiah will come and introduce our guest artist this evening, I'm asking you to pray for our speaker this evening and our former senior pastor, Dr. Anthony Medley. How do I, how do I follow that introduction? There's some things you just can't do. <laughs> Pastor, it's good to see you back home. But tonight I have the esteemed privilege to introduce BET's Sunday's Best Season 6 finalist and the 2022 Stellar Award New Artist of the Year nominee, Josh Copeland to the welcome at the Emmanuel Vinko Church. Josh is a gospel powerhouse. He has an anointing with a captivating ability to enthrall audiences, not only within the DMV and across the United States, but across the world. A native of Salisbury, Maryland, Josh began his singing career at the age of nine and has gone on to open for many of gospel music trailblazers, including Pastor John P. Key, Karen Clark Shade, Dorinda Clark Cole, Ty Tribbett, Anthony Brown, and that's just to name a few. Josh was also featured on many television appearances, including BET's Joyful Noise, the Dorinda Clark Cole Show, The Word Network, and the Bishop George Bloomer Show. But he's also a very prolific writer and recording artist as well. He has released his debut single, Uphold Me. He released this in January 2018. And his latest project, No Fear, was released later in September of 2021. That project has actually been very successful and it has been reaching the charts. It's number 15 on the iTunes Christian Gospel charts with 200 digital albums also being downloaded as well. But don't take my word for it. His latest single, All Things Working, is currently impacting radio and landing him on the top 20 on the iTunes top 20 200 Christian Gospel songs chart. So he's a singer, he is a prolific performer, but he's also a family man. He's a devoted family man, happily married to the beautiful Tamika Copeland, where they share two daughters and a son. Josh embodies the sincere love of God and people with whom he rests to, to share the refreshing gospel of Jesus Christ with hopes that their lives are radically transformed by God through his music ministry. Please let Josh Copeland know how welcome he is at, at the Emmanuel Brinkler Church, along with his music director, Don, on keyboards. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we clap our hands for Jesus? Can we clap our hands for Jesus? Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Anybody come to bless him tonight? Did you really come to bless him tonight? Happy 60th anniversary. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Can you turn that track up for me? Hallelujah.
Can you give me some more on the monitors? Hallelujah, Jesus. Song says this. There is a sound, a sound from heaven that changes everything. I am free. No fear is holding me. Nothing can stop my praying. Oh, we were made for freedom. Jesus has redeemed my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sing it out together. Freedom reigns forever, never. Let freedom fill the room. Can you do me a favor and just clap your hands like this? Let freedom fill the room. I am free, no fear is holding me, nothing can stop my brain. Oh, we were made for freedom. Oh, sing it out together. Ever, let freedom fill. If you don't mind, you can stand on your feet. Freedom filled. Let freedom fill. I am free, praise the Lord, I'm free, everybody sing now with me, I'm free. No longer bound No more chains holding me My soul is resting hey, It's just a blessing Praise the Lord Praise the Lord That's what we can Wonderful Savior. Can you stop that track for me? Hallelujah. The track is still playing. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all right. Can we clap our hands for Jesus? Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. Do I have a witness in here today? No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. I don't know about you, but there's no other reason that I came in this room but to praise the Lord for his love and kindness towards us. Praise the Lord for his tender mercy towards us. years of ministry God's been good just lean on somebody and say God's been good to us and in the process of God being good to us I don't know if this is your testimony tonight but through it all through it all woo, I've learned to trust do I have a witness tonight? I learn how to trust in God. He took me through it all. Through it all. I learned to the
And every time we called on him, he came through. <laughs> he is a prayer answering God. There is a name that we can call on. The Bible said whereby we can be saved. And that name is what? What's that name? Somebody ought to call that name. Oh, I can't hear you. Call that name, Jesus. 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 There is a name. That's a place. I can run and be safe. There is a name that can heal, calm the storm, peace be still. I can call on that name and be safe. Said there's no greater name than Jesus. Jesus. Stand and proclaim no greater name. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, lift those hands. There is a name. That's a place I can run and be safe. There is a name that can heal, calm the storm, peace be still. I can call on that name and be safe.
Somebody call that name. He said, Why you yet call me? I'll say, Here I am, here I am. What is it that you want me to do for you? I'm here to meet your needs tonight. Jesus. Jesus. There's no greater name, Jesus, Jesus, stand and proclaim, no greater name, Jesus, Jesus. No greater name, Jesus. Jesus. One more time, stand and stand and proclaim. No greater name, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.
online and those that are here. You see, in this church, some stand, some don't. But everyone is blessed by your song tonight. So don't look at the responses. Please understand that some folk take it different ways, but all of us are in the overflow right now because of what you bring to us. Can you put your hands together again for the man of God, for the ministry of music in this place? And while you're clapping, will you also keep him in your prayers that God will continue to use you wherever you go and you will continue to be a blessing through song the way you have been to us tonight. We praise God for you. Praise God. Praise God. Good evening, everyone. It's good to be home. All right. Uh, there are so many things that I may say and may not say. It depends upon how the Lord leads. In fact, I'm a little concerned that I haven't been away long enough to be back to preach already. Uh, I thought you have to circle away so many years and then, and then come back home. At least allow the seats to get cold before you, before you come back. Uh, but, but tonight, tonight, I'm, I'm grateful to the man of God of this house, my pastor and my friend, Dr. Marcus Harris. We praise God for you. And we praise God for the first lady of this house, Dr. Arlene Harris. Praise God for both of you. They are such a well-dressed, debonair, well-polished, and well-prepared pastoral powerhouse team in Jesus' name. Amen. And as much as I love our senior pastor, I do have art against him, always. I want someone to talk to him on my behalf, to ask him to set the brother free. You see, I had to recently remind him that I'm no longer in the pastoral realm, that I'm now a departmental director in the Alleghenies Conference. And I thought that came with some rights and privileges. I thought one of the rights and privileges was that I would be released from a summer task that is normally designated to interns, those in trouble, and those on the fringes of ministry. It's called Camp Pitch Crew. I try to remind our pastor that I'm beyond that experience, that I'm a departmental director now. He and our departing president uh, looked at me as though I would speak in another language. And they almost reminded me that, that this crew almost works like the mob. There's only one way out, and it's not by walking out. And so if you have any compassion on me, please talk to your senior pastor and ask him if one year he can set a brother free from summertime manual labor with boots and hard hats on and directing you while you come to camp meeting. In fact, I declared that I was free last year. I came home and declared to India, I'm not going to do this again. She looked at me and said, mm-hmm, I know the way you all work, but it's so good to be here. Praise God for you. It's so good to see each and every one of you. Can I... If I start calling names, I'm going to get in trouble, but I'm going to get in trouble. It's what we do. Amen. Uh, you, you know, we did this 10 years ago at the 50th anniversary. And I'm just amazed how, amazed how fast 10 years have moved on. Uh, and that, praise God, many of you are still here. I, I am surprised, to be honest with you, that this many of you came out on a Sunday night. I, I really am. And for those who are 
watching online. Uh, uh, thank you to Delbert and Susan Baker. They reached out to me and let me know they were praying for me and they're going to be here. Uh, I did not know that the vice president for administration was going to show up. Uh, but that concerns me, especially, especially after the announcement my spiritual daughter in ministry accidentally, fraudulently stead in this pulpit. Uh, don't believe anything she said. I told her that we don't want to declare positions in this season because two things can happen to you. You can end up fired and then assassinated. So, so we want to stay away from all those declarations. We praise God for all of you here tonight. I'm glad that my bride India is here with me this evening. We praise God for her. I'm grateful I missed the pastoral team that's here, um, the colleagues in ministry, and our distinguished first elder, Dr. Crary. Uh, I, 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 I am ecstatic that Elder Deshay, she is sitting right here. Uh, elder Bernice Deshay has influenced so much of what I currently do in health ministries. In fact, I would dare suggest that you have a lot to do with me being in health ministries. Uh, she has been such a tower of strength, of encouragement, and love for me, and has helped me personally in my own health journey over the years. And I just praise God for you, from whom all blessings flow. You have been good to me. And I praise God. You know, now I've been away, so it was over 15 years ago when I first came here, one of the first persons I met here was Elder Deshay, and I was quite concerned. Because until you know someone and learn to love someone, you don't always understand them. And I remember we had a firm conversation about pastors and health. And in that conversation, she reminded me that Pastors need to do better, uh, Doc Watkins. That we need to do better in lifestyle and we need to do better in our dietary practices. This was over 15 years ago. And I remember then in that conversation we had that me and my <clears throat> still growing way reminded her in the back, just the two of us, Elder Deshay, let me tell you something. That I, I believe in total health. I do, but I also believe in the word of God. And I told her, I never forgot this, that Jesus served fish. And the priests, the priests in the Old Testament, uh, you know, they ate beef ribs and et cetera, et cetera. So I told her that I'm only going to do what the Bible says do. That's what I told her in that conversation. Shortly after that, perhaps in the same year, I had an experience that changed my life. Shortly after that, in this church, I'd gone to see Dr. Barnes and found out that I had a bleed in my eye to the point where I was about to lose my eye. And I asked, well, what is the cause of this? And he reminded me that this is some of the silent issues that go along with being a diabetic, that your eyes have to be examined over and over again. And we were not sure if I was going to lose my vision. Uh, and so after that was corrected, immediately I enrolled in a course of reversing diabetes that Elder Deshay was teaching over 14 years ago and changed my whole lifestyle from how I eat and what I do. That's what she did. I did not know then that God kept me here for 14 years because it took that long to get me ready to do health ministries. You, you see, God will release you when, he, when, when he's ready. Some of us are just stubborn. So instead of three or five years, God said, I got to keep you at Brinklow for 15 years until you get ready to do what I want you to do. In Jesus' name, 14 years it took. And so I praise God for it. I praise God for each and every one of you. 
I don't know what time we're supposed to get out of church tonight, so I'm going to keep moving because uh, I do have a few things to say. It's just good to see all of you. It really, really is. You know, some of you in your same seats. It's good, good, it's good to see you. Okay, can I just do one short dig? It's good to see all of you. And um, it's good to see Leslie, too. Yes. Amen. That's the younger sister Brinklow gave me that I didn't ask for. In Jesus' name, amen. After a long week of doing health ministries, a health ministry series this weekend, that was Friday night and Sabbath morning and Sabbath afternoon. Uh, during this experience, I had an opportunity to speak with one of our pastors, uh, Dr. Wimbish, a, one of our Indian pastors who said to me, you know, I was in my home country, of India. I was raised in the Catholic faith. And I need to tell you how I came to Adventism. My family and I, we would listen to these recordings, these worship recordings, this pastor, every week, every time we could get a, a cassette or a CD player or whatever it was, we would listen to all his sermons. And as a result of his preaching, we became Seventh-day Adventists. Tell me that pastor was C.D. Brooks. Remember, he used to sit right over here, he and his wife. Such fond memories, just jolted. I thought and reminisced on individuals who used to sit in certain places who are no longer here with us. The empty seats. If there's one uh, thing that I carry in my heart after 14 years are the members who are sleeping in Jesus. Um, John Sackett, it's also good to see you. Praise God for your presence tonight. I, I used to, in some of my quiet moments, come into this church when no one was here and sit in the seats where you sit just to pray for you. It's to move from pew to pew just to pray. Many of you are here right now. That's why I know your seats and it matters because I would come in and sit there and call your names in prayer. One of my private practices that I would do, as, especially when we started the, um, the midday prayer service for our seniors. At times they would be down there doing things and I would be up here moving from pew to pew, talking to God about you. I miss that practice. It meant something. While I was praying for you, God was doing something for me also. So after this weekend, after preaching Friday night, Sabbath morning, and, and Elder Hill doing this uh, seminar, uh, Sabbath afternoon, Sabbath evening, I got home, said to India, let's, let's watch Brinklow. Let, let's see what happened at Brinklow today. And so, and so we wanted to watch the sermon and the concert. Praise God that they were all recorded. And so we, we, we watched the sermon and we were so blessed by the word of God yesterday. I mean, we honestly were. We were blessed and at the repeal, we were also took out our phones and we were blessed. And, and we watched the concert. Uh, uh, we watched the concert. Uh, that last night, and so blessed that I've been singing the songs all day long. You know, almost rehearsing to get up here and let me try one, but not, not, not that one. So, so it was also a blessing to see so many faces church yesterday. It, re it really was. It felt good. It really did, and I praise God for yesterday's experience, for the sermon and, and for the concert, what a blessing. Uh, it was just incredible. 
But it also exposed a problem that I have. A problem or an opportunity, but last night when I finished, Gary, I, I, I discovered that uh, Whitley preached from the same text, <laughs> the same chapter that I had planned to preach uh, 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 today. You know, I, I thought about that and I was like, it, it almost feels like you're back in school. <laughs> taking homiletics in undergrad and seminary, uh, sometimes the professor would assign students um, a chapter in the Bible, the same chapter, and tell them to go put sermons and come back. That's okay if you're the first one. And, and if you're not the first one, Van Dyne, you know, you want to make sure that whatever the list is that you preach before the good preachers have to preach. And, and, so, and so last night, uh, I was tempted to so India, well, I got to go in my study and write a new sermon. Uh, I got to do something totally different. And then God caught my attention. Uh, God reminded me that we can trust in his endless tree of truth. Because when you go back to God's tree of truth and shake it, he always has enough fruit left for you and fruit for a new day. Uh, he, he reminded me that when he was given manna, it was fresh every day. And that all those Sabbath manna was extraordinary for Sabbath. That on Sunday, they, they needed manna again. Uh, and so I, I, I come now in the belief that the same God who delivers keeps on delivering. Yes. Same God who gives keeps on giving. And yes, yes, you, you can go to the same text yes. and ask the Holy Spirit to speak again. And, and so, so in the time that I, that I had, I want you to know that before I heard the sermon last evening, that my sermon was already marinating in the spiritual oven. And my mind was already percolating in my heart waiting to serve what God gave me before yesterday. And so with that disclaimer, that's what I come with. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father in heaven, we ask you now to stay with us and speak to us one more time. And if this baton that is preached tonight is even carried to another preacher on another night, do only what you can do. Bless us in Jesus' name. Oh, amen. Amen. We're back in Joshua, uh, the fourth chapter, again. Uh, the story that was read, preached, and delivered on yesterday. We pick it up uh, one more time when all the people, Joshua 4, 1 through 8, when all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, now choose 12 men, one from each of the tribe. Tell them. Take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. This is the NIV. So Joshua called together the 12 men who, had, who, had, who, who he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. And he told them, go in the middle of the Jordan. In front of the ark of the Lord your God, each of you, each of you must pick up a stone and carry it on your shoulder. Twelve stones in all, one for each of the tribes of Israel. And we will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? Uh, when you tell them, they, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing, that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. So the men did as Joshua had commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan River, one for each tribe, that just as the Lord had told Joshua, they carried them to the place where they camped uh, for the night and constructed the memorial there. This message tonight is entitled, 
Which stones will you carry? Begins with that critical question. Which stones will you carry? The Jordan River is 156 miles long. It originated in the northernmost snow-capped mountain slopes of Mount Hermon. It feeds into the Sea of Galilee, then it flows southwards all the way to the Dead Sea. This iconic river holds immense historical and biblical significance, not only for the Israelites' miraculous crossing, but this is the same river centuries later where John the Baptist baptized Jesus. The Jordan River is mentioned over 185 times in scripture. Even Naaman the leopard had to wash in the muddy Jordan seven times before he was healed from his disease. Biblical historians tell us that the Jordan has sustained ag uh, sustains agriculture and wildlife throughout Canaan's long history, long before the Israelites conquered the land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of fertile ground and abundant resources. The Jordan River is a critical resource of fresh water for the entire region. Y'all stay with me. Uh, this this uh, place is, is known as the, as the uh, ecosystem of diversity where, with various a uh, variety of fish and bird life and plants that exist in this region. Uh, the flow, the flow of the plant life, the rolling greens hills, the plush pastures make the valley fertile ground for produce and plentiful crops. We get that as a result of the Jordan. The animal life, the birds, the fish, the, the, the microorganisms help to maintain the ecological balance all around the Jordan River. The Jordan River has various uh, salinity levels along its course, while the upper reaches contains fresh water, fresh water, it, it is noted along its course, while the, uh, uh, while then, then the lower reaches, particularly as it enters the Dead Sea, have extremely high levels of salinity, making it nearly impossible for most, most life form to thrive. It starts by being drinking water, and it ends by being water that is toxic that you can't touch. That's the Jordan River. And like all downstream flowing great rivers, this river functions as nature's natural broom, sweeping mechanisms with the help of strong currents and undercurrents. The Jordan uh, was nature's way, is nature's way of washing away dead trees and driftwood and other debris that would stay afloat as, as it moved down the river. The undercurrent would pull down decayed foliage, dead fish, heavier objects from fallen tree branches, limbs, and entire trees. Rolling rocks would disrupt the bottom terrain that was constantly being changed. The underwater landscape was the waterbed of dirt and gravel and aquatic plants that at various seasons will become uprooted and transported until stopped by the bend of the river or other obstacles like large stones. We show up at the Jordan River and in the text, while God's nature is sweeping refuge in biodegradable, biodegradable substance by the currents on the river and the strong undercurrents below the river, it's here when God redirects the river with his supernatural hand to, and stops the Jordan River from flowing. He cuts out all the currents. He cuts out all the flow of debris on top of the water and under the water. He stops it right here. Oh, uh, this is getting good to me right here. 
You see, God stopped the Jordan from flowing, and we understand God dried up the riverbed to make it suitable for human passage. Please note, the Jordan was stopped up and dried up, but the Jordan was not cleaned up. Years of debris, underwater landscaping, the gathering of natural objects was exposed when the river ceased to flow by the all-powerful hand of God. This shouldn't surprise you. Every time you see a drought and some lake drives up or some river drives up, Archaeologists are always amazed what was discovered at the waterbeds and at the bottom. Things that were missing for hundreds of years reappear. We find out how littered a lake bottom is or a river bottom is. Well, the Jericho was no different. There is also tension in this story. There's tension in the text. And if we move too fast, we miss the tension, tension that is in the text. The tension shows up in verse 10. Notice what the Bible says. So the priests who bore the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord had commanded Joshua to speak to the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. And the last phrase says, and the people hurried and crossed over. This was no slow walk. This was no casual walk. The Bible said that they had to hurry up and do it. Please note, we're not talking a few people. We're talking almost up to a million people. Not just them, but what is else is crossing is cattle and sheep and other goods they have gathered. They're the young, they're the old, they're others, and they're trying to hurry up and cross the Jordan. But notice, while they're crossing, it's not a smooth walkway. They gotta step around debris and step over wood and step around large rocks and keep from tripping and falling while they're crossing over. All this is taking place while they're moving in a hurry. Come on now, let's get across. Come on, be careful. Watch your step. But I need everybody to cross the Jordan. You stay with me. Watch them and the thousands trying to navigate crossing the Jordan River. The other tension is in the text that shows up not only in verse 10, but also verse 18, where the Bible says, and it came to pass when the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priest's feet touched the dry land, and the waters of the Jordan turned to their place and overflow all the banks as before. In other words, they knew they had to hurry up and get across. God is merciful, and God is, is slow, and, 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 but God was like, come on now, I got to move because I'm going to hold the water back just long enough for everybody to get past. And the moment the priests, the moment their feet touched dry ground, it wasn't a, a slow push. Instantaneously, God released the Jordan, and it completely flowed. I don't know about you, but there's tension in this passage. There's concern about crossing the Jordan, knowing that God is holding the water. God, how long are you going to hold this? Are you going to let me get across? Because there were complainers that went across. There were folk who were faithless that went across. Is God going to allow the Jordan to come on me? I don't know. But God was holding the water and allowing them to pass over. Do you see the tension? Do you see, do you see what's taking place here? Forget what Hollywood tells you. Forget what you imagine the children's story. Do you understand thousands of people stepping around, trying to get over, trying to hurry up without falling down, knowing they got to get over, that God has time. God's time is always his time. We got to move when God says move. He's holding it. He's not going to hold it all day for us. Not that he can't, but God is consistent. God is faithful. God has a plan. God wants us to trust him. So let me move. Move you. Well, I can move you. Hurry up. Don't slow down. This is not the time for selfies or taking pictures. This is the time to cross because I got business to do. But in the midst of all of this, Scripture tells us 
that, that God instructs Joshua, choose 12 men, one from each of the tribes of Israel, and send them in to gather large stones. Each one pick up a large stone, place it on their shoulder, and carry it to the other side to be used for building a monument of remembrance. Uh, just think with me. The landscape that, that there's crossed, there are two interpretations. Uh, scholars suggest that maybe the priests were held back while others crossed. But I want to suggest to you that, that the men that were selected uh, to go select the stones were also family men who had to make sure that their own family safely crossed the Jordan. So while they were focusing on hurrying up their families to get across, making sure that the elderly wasn't falling and tripping, that the babies were not lost or forgotten, and that they made it and their cattle and their sheep made it, but in addition to that, they had still another responsibility. Now that family is safe, God has selected you to go back and to select and pick up these large stones. I know what you think. I know you want to believe that when they walk back to the riverbed, when they walk back in, that the stones were just there. But based upon the scenario we created, I want to suggest they had to search for the right stones. They had to, they, they, they had to unclear and unmangle stuff. They had to move wood and, and, move, and, and move dead things. They had to move foliage and they had to move other pebbles. They had to clear debris away and find the right stone to pick up. While the tension is there, not knowing when God is going to release the river, knowing that there is a urgency to get things done, these 12 step back in, looking and hurrying. Okay, now, we only have a little bit of time. Let me, let me grab the right size stone. Let me pick up the right stone and, and carry that stone with me. Carry it in the haste. Can I suggest to you that if the right 12 men were not selected, that perhaps the story would read differently? You see, they could have picked up useless debris that is as helpful as empty clouds without rain. They could have picked up decayed underwater plants that were full of toxic smell and odor. They could have picked up dead fish. You know, some people like picking up dead things. They could have picked up small rocks instead of large stones. Because there are some people who, who prefer to throw stones than carry rocks. They could have picked up dirt. Because if the wrong ones were there, there are people who specialize in just spreading dirt. Uh, they could have picked up all kinds of debris. Because there are some people who specialize not in carrying large stones, but in carrying rumors. There are some people who don't carry large stones, but who carry a toxic spirit. There are some people, instead of carrying large stones, they like to carry old history on you. But God knew that he had to choose the right men with the right kind of faith to go back and risk everything and carry the right kind of stones. My question for you today my only question is, I want to know, each one of you, which stones are you carrying? When you go back in to the riverbed, and you got to pick up stuff that represents the history of our church. Do you grab stones, or do you grab dirt? Do you grab stones, or do you grab dead things that ought to remain buried? Do you grab stones or do you bury rocks to throw at other people? What do you pick up when you go back into the riverbed? Can I suggest to you today that I've taken time this week 
to pick up my own large stones. When I think about this church and its history, in my time here, Lord, what stones do I want to carry? I want to carry the stone of Central Union Mission, the thing that Carlos Medley and David Coleman and, and Brother Sterling started ministering to the homeless men in D.C. I carry that stone. I want to pick up a stone called G.E. Peters School the school that started when our own children couldn't go to other schools, so our school was started. And then some folk try to close our school. That school is here to stay. I pick up that stone. I pick up a stone called Brighter Hope and the Record Keeper Evangelism Series that took place in this church. That pilot program that came that shows that we can use the record keeper and preachers like Ivan Williams and Keelan Fielder to bring men, women, boys, and girls to the kingdom of God. I pick up that stone. I pick up a stone called Christmas caroling in our communities where we would go to the communities before Christmas and share good tidings around the neighborhood. I pick up that stone. I pick up a stone called health evangelism in Puerto Rico with Elder Deshay and also with Betsy Johnson and our whole team where we went to Puerto Rico to do health evangelism. I pick up that stone. I pick up a stone called the volunteer pastoral team at the Emmanuel Brinklow Church. It's like no other any place else. I'll gladly pick up that stone. I'll pick up a stone that we brought to prayer during the COVID called the Outdoor Dojo when the Young Warriors couldn't work and the basketball league was shut down because of COVID. Daniel and a few other of us started an outdoor dojo just for young men. I'll pick up that stone. I'll pick up a stone called Brinklow Church Renovation led by Sandy Crank himself when others said that we don't longer need an elevator but what will we do without the elevator today? I'll pick up that stone because it makes a difference. I'll pick up a stone called the Hope Center that was purchased across the street with the unlimited opportunities and possibilities that God has for us. I'll pick that stone up. I'll pick up a stone that was in this church called the Health Minute. If only it was just a minute and it was a recorded minute, maybe we will still have that minute, but I'll pick up that stone. Then I will pick up a stone call Faith Community Nursing that exists in this church under Betsy Johnson like nobody else that has changed how nursing is viewed in the Seventh-day Adventist Church in North America. I will gladly pick up that stone, the last stone that I will grab right now because there are so many other stones that you have. It's a stone called grocery, grab and go in the ministry that comes as a result of that. For over four years, you are still doing it. I will gladly pick up my stones. You notice that when Joshua instructed the 12, chose 12 men from each of the 12 tribes. Why didn't he simply ask the Levites to do it? I mean, they were the workhorse for the church. Why did you skip over the Levites? I'm so glad you asked. One man from each tribe. Why one man from each tribe that each tribe will have their own story to tell in their own family? Don't, don't miss that. To ensure that each family and tribe will not only have their own story, they selected 12 men from among the people because Joshua knew from God that the work of building monuments, of building churches is not about the Levites, it's always about the people. It's the people that build monuments. It's the people that sustain the church. It's the people that keeps it moving forward. It has always been about you, the people. You are the heart and soul of this church. 
You are the ones that make it happen. Pastors give vision and direction, but without the people, monuments are never built. It was also important to choose 12 people, 12 men, so that each family can create and tell their own stories. It's ownership. The beautiful thing about being a part of God's church is that each of us can pick up large stones and talk about God's goodness to us in this church. That's the beauty of it. And yet we notice when we read the history of the children of Israel, if they had kept on telling the stories of the miracles of God, they would never have drifted away from God. You, you see, you drift from God when you cease to remember God's goodness to you every day. You, you drift from God when you stop coming to the monuments that you have helped build for God that remind you of what God has done for you. When you get spiritual amnesia, that's when the devil steps in. And so families had ownership in the monument building process. Because every day and every month and every year, over and over again, families can tell the story of what God did for them. They also crossed over. It wasn't other people who were saved. We were saved. We were set free. We were delivered. We were blessed. God didn't just cover the Levites. God showed up at our house also. It's only when you forget to tell the stories that you drift from where God wants you to be. And let me suggest to you that there are too many folk who have forgotten the stories, who refuse to keep the stories alive. Uh, let me suggest to you that there are too many people who have gone back to the riverbed to pick up dirt instead of large stones. Too many people are grabbing the wrong stuff it's only when you get those large stories, put them on your shoulders, walk to the other side, and determine, doesn't matter what come my way, this story will live on. This truth will never be compromised. Racial critical theory won't change it. False facts won't change it. This truth lives on. Oh, and I praise God for that. The Apostle Paul got it right. In Philippians 3, as I prepare to close, when he wrote, not that I have already obtained, Philippians 3, 12 to 14, or am already perfect. He said, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press forward, I press forward to the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. What do you mean, Paul, you forget what's behind you? Paul, weren't you once a persecutor of the church? Weren't you present when Stephen was stoned? Paul, weren't you shipwrecked? Paul, weren't you beaten? Paul, didn't a snake take hold of you? You had to shake it off a viper in the fire? Paul, didn't you get many stripes? Paul, weren't you talked about? Paul, wasn't your life threatened? Paul, weren't you called an outcast? Paul, weren't you also criticized of those in the church? Paul says yes. But now that I'm with Christ, 
I got selective memory for forgetting those things which are behind me. There's dirt I choose not to reflect upon. There are bad times that I no longer hold on to. There's criticism that I leave where it is. You see, I got my eyes on the prize. I press forward now in Jesus. I'm focused on what really matters. I got a goal in mind. I got heaven on my mind. No longer do I have time for small stuff. I don't have time for empty stuff. Jesus is in my reach. I'm going to keep running towards Jesus. I'm going to pick up my large stones and I'm going to carry it until I see Jesus. Uh, which stones will you carry today? Where do you plan to go? Are you going to hold on to stuff? Or like Paul, you're going to have your mind made up and focus on Jesus. You know what I've discovered being away from Brinklow? That there are so many wonderful things that God is doing at Brinklow through you. It overshadows everything else. But something else I learned at Brinklow, since leaving Brinklow, that heaven is closer today than it was two years ago. And I don't know about you, as we prepare to close during this evangelism series, do you have your minds on him? Is he the one occupying your thoughts, your direction? Is he permeating every moment of your day? What takes place between your ears throughout the course of a day? Do you see him? Oh, I'm not suggesting that there aren't problems and issues that need to be prayed for. But what I'm suggesting is that you keep Jesus in front of you. You keep him on your mind. You, you remember the blessings of yesterday. Remember the same God that led you on yesterday, who carried you through yesterday. That same God is with you today, and praise God, he'll carry you through. On tomorrow, your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, Father in heaven. It's a late Sunday night. And we've come by here again to continue what you are doing in this church. The revival and reformation that has taken place as we celebrate 60 years Lord, you kept us for a reason for 60 years. Continue to lead and bless us. But tonight, tonight, I pray for someone under the sound of my voice or someone who is watching online. Someone who may have picked up the wrong stuff in the riverbed. They may have been handed dead debris. They may have been handed stones and pebbles to throw at other people. Lord, instead of large stones, they only have dirt in their hands. But tonight, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, help all of us to remember those large stones. Help us, Lord, to pick those up, to remember those bold blessings that came from God. What about you tonight? Do, do you need to be reminded? Do you need to go down memory lane to recapture all that God has done for you and is doing for you? Even if you are currently going through hell, and nothing is working today. That's just the enemy trying to block an eclipse like we had a week ago. What the son of righteousness is doing in your life. Can I pray for you? Can you, will you just 
Can we, can we, you know, you've been sitting too long already. It's not good for your health. Can somebody that stand saying, Lord, Lord, take me back to those large stones. Help me to see those blessings. I pray that they will carry me in my todays and in my tomorrows. And God is so good. He has done so much for us. You have your own individual list of large stones. Those are the ones I'm asking God to bring to your remembrance even now. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand to our feet. We, we thank you tonight that you are such an awesome God. The river flow of life has brought so much debris that surrounds us. And sometimes it blocks the blessings that are above us if only we would look up and see. So, so even now, I pray, God, that you will remove the debris of life, all that is negative, and help us to see the large stone of righteousness, Jesus Christ himself. And Lord, we want to pick you up, but you're so good, you pick us up. And you carry us. You take the burden from us and you carry us. So in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you, oh God, will be that rock, will be that anchor, will be that strong tower right now to carry someone through whatever is coming their way, whatever currents are upon them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, carry them and bless them. And may they see that the rock of their salvation is still Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you for doing that for someone right now. Thank you for lifting the burden on someone's life right now. Thank you for healing someone right now. Thank you for blessing someone right now. Thank you for delivering someone right now. Thank you for forgiving someone right now. Thank you for showing up in their lives right now. We claim it all in the name that is above every name in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we thank you we believe in you we honor you and we look forward to seeing you soon in Jesus name we pray amen and amen you may be seated climbing Jacob's ladder and every round goes higher and higher. Yesterday, Pastor Phipps encouraged us, under God will part your Jordan. And he sang for us. And tonight, we were blessed by Josh Copeland, who sang for us. And Pastor Medley stayed in Joshua chapter 4. And he asked us tonight, which stones are you carrying? We give God the praise that on tomorrow night, when everybody? Tomorrow night, night, back here at seven o'clock, our former pastor, Pastor Gary Wimbush, will be preaching the word of God. Can you say amen? Amen. And also, Dewan Sterling, our own Dewan Sterling, will be singing in song. And we just thank God tonight for what he is doing. We are praying for personal revival and corporate revival. And we thank God that he has not failed us yet. We want to remind you that as you work tomorrow, you can come and get a light refreshment at 6 p.m. tomorrow night, and then we'll begin our journey at 7. If you took a selfie tonight, and Isaiah and I took a selfie, 
with a young lady named Mikael. Mikael, I'm going to put you on blast. Would you stand, Mikael? Mikael was our selfie tonight. She's from Georgia looking for a church home. And we praise God for you tonight, Mikael. And we're going to pray not only for her, but would you pray for your selfie persons tonight? Let's stand as we close our service this evening. Let us pray. Father, tonight we are commemorating what you've done these past 60 years. But if the truth be told, Lord, we don't want to be here another 60. I think I added it up, Lord, 2,084. Oh, God, would you come, please? And as you, as you... Draw us closer to Jesus. May these time be, times be eternally meaningful for us. Thank you tonight for your word. We want to carry those stones and never forget what you have done for us. So as we go out tomorrow, Lord, help us to tell our story. And until we meet tomorrow, have faith, dear friends, in God. Keep the faith, and may you share the good news until tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Back in this place for our 60th anniversary and revival continues. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen, amen. Shake somebody's hand before you leave. Say, I'm so glad you came. We'll see you tomorrow night.